Here I stand on the hooven hurt to Antrim. Looking back away at the far other hills, the dreamy cloudy hills of Old Scotia. Elephant to ever hunt neckers, car jetting clear and word and song, and field and hoose and pew, all oh, that new and long we're in. I think if anybody wants to have an example, either in spoken today for Ulster Scots, Every note for Slamish is or Sleeve Namish, if you want to have an Irish name. It's there, a landmark. And I have always thought of it as very much, from my school days, associating it with St. Patrick with all sorts of things, you know. So I think if I wanted a, a symbol, if I'm going to use that word, for the County Antrim countryside, it'd be Slamish I'd think of. I was trying to portray the whole language. I wanted someone that would give the feel, the soul of Ultra Scott and what it means to the people. And that's my whole idea of my poetry, is to get the feel of the land and my feel about the land, and as a native of this land, to get that down on paper. So when I recite it or read it or somebody else does, I would hope that what I've experienced, they will experience. Here I stand back looking to near their house, to this waiting land around me, where in so hard and weasel stood. Lost a while, between dreams and saw, or dream and saw, streets and braid afore them, another re, another frock, braid gathered, throng or far, where next one or no or dreamed yet, for all the better walking on 98. This land that cried the dreamers back, for this is him. Fascinated by local words and speech, Fenton set about collecting a personal record of Ulster Scots in County Antrim. It was a passion that would become the seminal work of the Hamley Tongue. He went across the county and he interviewed all of these people and asked them. He had a checklist of words and he added to them as he found out words from them. So he was able to include in the Hamley Tongue words that were common throughout the whole area. I wasn't setting out on a career as a poet or anything like that at all. It was only later on I tried in the Hamley tongue not to write just a lexicon, a dictionary of anything like that. I wanted a full picture, a portrait, in all its richness and variety of Ulster Scots. And I only thought you could, to get the essence of that, to get the soul of it, you would do that in poetry as well as you could to the best of your ability, which is why I started to write poetry then. To understand his poetry, you really do need to use the Hamley tongue. I mean, even a fluent native Ulster Scots speaker would have difficulty with the literature of Jim Fenton's poetry because it is literature and it has all of these levels of meaning and subtleties and so on. And you have to be aware that a single word can have different connotations and so on to understand fully the literature. When I was young, I wandered the bogs that run from above Dunloy to Glaryford. Eight miles, 10 miles of bog, and odd break of fields in between. At night time, I would sit there and as the darkness gathered around me and the lights began to come on the countryside, it transformed the world and transformed my feelings. And eventually out of that came the poem. Daily gun simply means daylight going, dusk, the end of the day. My day as well, that I'd had, it was coming to an end, you know, it was all, all that. Daily gun. And knew the lechs are broken o'er, MacBlack the bray behind. The sallies, hooven soft and grey, come cluding gather none. The water glancing o'er its dark, bobs lapping, whispering by. The bogs dark, sweeling quit, around the tumult where I lie. The peats quit low, the late weeks soft lacked, MacBlack the oot by new. The prettiest plout, the neap sweet steam, 
Cludrin her sweet and brew, by Quarn Bog or Quiller Odwa, on Lex to Gleganee, for Warracombe and Warragay, but Connie Stay or Lee.